is good to be in the house of the Lord. I was just remembering our uh, our time when we couldn't go to to church, and just how after a while it was like, oh Lord, this we're starting to miss it, and. Yeah, just so privileged to be able to make the most of time. We don't always know everything that is um, coming into the future, but like Gil said, we can trust. And that's a good place to stay, isn't it? To know that the Lord knows everything. Well, I'm so excited about this word because I believe it's so timely. It's so timely. God always has something to say in the circumstances. And that is what, even though we don't always know where things are going to go, we always, we live in the present. We live in today. Amen? Uh, like Frank always says, thank you for today. Uh, we just live one day at a time. But God always has something to say to us today. Amen. Let all who have ears hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So the Spirit of the Lord is always saying, but we need to have ears to hear. And uh, what the world says and what the Spirit is saying to the churches is two entirely different things. And the Word of God on that, and um, this is just such a word and season, every single verse. 1 Corinthians 1, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no division among you, but that you will be perfectly united in mind and in thought. So that is, first of all, what uh, is so important, that the enemy would like to use the circumstances, and maybe you have already seen him at work, to bring division in the body, to bring division between family members about where we stand about the circumstances. Have any of you heard a few rumblings and rumors of that? And so, um, yeah, I'm, I won't be preaching that verse quite yet. I will just go through. In verse um, 18, it says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligent of the intelligent, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Amen. Do you see the foolishness in it? I just want to laugh sometime. Just uh, laugh. But for since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand a sign, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. Amen? And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think about what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world, the despised things, and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, you who have become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. Therefore it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. So it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence of human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and pervasive 
persuasive words, but with demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. So we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God designed for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has even conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things that God revealed to us by his spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God, for who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. For what we have received is not of the Spirit of the world, but by the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak. Not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit. Explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and can understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgment about all things, but such a person is not subject to mere human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. I know that's a big passage, but I'd rather hear the word than anything else. Anything else, and that's all you're going to hear in this place, because it's the word of God that has spiritual power. Amen? It's the word that's going to change us. And so praise God. So um, if ever a passage was speaking to our circumstance, I was just so amazed. So we've been talking, we've been in a bit of a series um, that talks about being possessors. God wants to raise up Canadians strong to know what it takes to possess in the spirit. And it takes the anointing, and the anointing of God, so we'll be going through it alphabetically. The anointing of God is what breaks yokes. Amen? The anointing of God, the power of God in us and through us. The anointing of God is on us. Every born again, baptized, and spirit of God has the anointing, has the power within them. Amen? And so as well, we are constantly... Um, taking ground, we're uh, constantly uh, moving forward in that anointing, believing in that anointing, we are also belonging. Amen? We're, sorry, I forgot the word. The other A word was advancing. We're constantly advancing. So even when we don't see it, he's working. We are advancing. There is an advancing. The kingdom of God is advancing. Powerfully, The word of God tells us the kingdom of God is advancing powerfully and the violent take it by force and we take by force and that is who we are as conquerors, as possessors to realize we have the anointing and to know that we are, we are advancing, always advancing, always looking. How is this to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ? And believe me, God is working by his spirit to advance the gospel of God. No matter matter what the enemy throws at us, whatever God says, he'll turn all things out for good to those who love the Lord. How many here love the Lord and are called according to his purpose? So God is advancing the gospel. Even though we don't see it, no matter what the enemy tries, it's going to majorly backfire in his face. Just like we saw on the cross of Jesus Christ, the devil, it was a quiet day. It was a dark day on that day. But we all know, like Chris said, that wasn't the end of the story. Amen? We're all living in this anticipation of the advancing of the kingdom of God. And B, we belong. We are a kingdom of priests together. We have a sense of belonging. We have been have a spirit of adoption that says we belong to a great mighty army. 
Amen? We might not look like a whole lot. Just like David, the little shepherd boy, didn't look like a whole lot. But glory to God. So my message this morning is not in our smarts, and it's not in our strength, and it's not in our size. By many or few, we will win the victory. Amen? That's because that's what the Word says. Amen? So advancing and then... Glory to God. We have a conquering spirit. We looked at the life of David as David raised up an army. God drew them and put them together that we have a conquering spirit. These men took on great, uh, great uh, challenges, armies that were bigger than them, where they didn't look like they had a chance, a fighting chance, but God was with them. So God said in his word, we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, we can advance. Therefore, we have a sense of belonging. Amen. We already know the end of the story. And how many know we win? Glory to God. He's already won. He's already won the victory. So this is what you belong to, a kingdom of priests, a kingdom, a great and mighty kingdom that have a conquering spirit. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. I'm just going to get right into our message here. Right into our message. So I want to preach to you about this incredible message of the cross and the power of it. That no matter how smart anybody is, the kingdoms and the rulers of this age, the psalm says, why do the nations rage and plot in vain? And they are plotting in vain. Amen. You can call it what you want, but the nations are raging. How many would agree? The nations, it's a touch. This is affecting all the nations of the world. Never before in all of history has something so taken uh, the nations of the world. And the rulers of this age, the Bible speaks of this passage, speaks of the rulers of this age. If they had known, they would have never crucified the king of glory. Amen. And so we are going to look at the difference. What is the difference between the wisdom of the world? Because there is a wisdom of the world. How many of you know the experts and the rulers of this age have a lot to say? Amen? How many are we here this morning? You're allowed to say amen. I can hear you right through your mass. It's good. It's good. It, you know what? The Holy Ghost likes that. I don't know if you know that, but he likes our participation. Amen. So glory to God. Sometimes Gil says, that was an awesome word. And I go, we had a lot of good pullers in the spirit. That helps me. It's like a, it's like skiing be, behind a motorboat. You got enough, that motorboat, some of those jet skis, people try to kneeboard and, and water ski and they hardly got nothing. Amen. So we need a, a powerful boat here. How many, you say, if you're my powerful boat. Amen. You put a demand on the word of God and I guarantee you he's going to be talking. Amen. You're going to, you're going to feel so smart because you have the wisdom of God. What's the difference between the wisdom of God and the wisdom of the world? Lots. I just went down. It was like Holy Ghost just gave me this fresh on the beach. I knew I had a divine appointment at the beach yesterday. I had to get this word in my bones. Well, first of all, the wisdom of this world will divide. That's why the first verse I read, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree with one another. In attitude, you agree with one another. The spirit of this world has brought a lot of division. How many have watched the news lately? I'll repeat, the spirit of the world, the, the, the wisdom of this world has brought a lot of division. The wisdom of God brings unity. This, and I'll show you, it, you know what, there has never been such powerful unity among the body of Christ. Among the, those who truly know the Lord, even through the unrest in the United States, it has unified. What God is doing, the wisdom of the, of the Lord is unifying people. And the wisdom of the world is dividing people. And a kingdom divided is going to 
not fall. When we just declare and decree in Jesus' name, kingdom of this world is going to fall because they are divided. Now, don't walk in division. Here he has to say to Christians, make sure you don't get in division among each other, arguing, disbating about what the world's saying. Stick to the word and you'll be unified. Stick to Jesus. Stick to, stick to the wisdom of the cross and it will unify. Glory God. And there's nothing the devil fears more. All it takes is a husband and a wife. I'll tell you, the enemy will fight you tooth and nail to keep you divided as husband and wife. Right? Because the devil knows that unity, if husbands and wives agree, wherever two agree on anything touching this earth, it shall be done by our Father in heaven. So difference number one of the wisdom of this world to the wisdom of God is the wisdom of God will unify and the wisdom of the world will divide. Praise God. Second thing, the wisdom of God is unto salvation. It is a power of God, for it is written, I'll destroy the wisdom of the wise and the intelligence of the intelligent. I will frustrate. That kingdom's coming down. Where's the wise person? Where's the teacher of the law? Where's the philosopher? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? So he's going to make it foolish. He's going to cause it to come down. Already, if you're really listening to what the medical, uh, what medical science is saying, uh, there's, it, it, God's bringing the foolishness. It's really utterly foolish. The very things that brings health and healing to the body. Don't think trying to stay out of sickness. Think keeping healthy. The greatest thing you can do to keeping away disease and sickness is make sure you have a healthy body. Amen. So the wisdom of God is concentrate on life. I choose life and I choose blessing. I've been redeemed from the curse. The stripes of Jesus. Uh, he took those stripes on his back for by his stripes I was healed. Amen. I believe in taking my vitamin C and with zinc. I believe in taking my oil of oregano if I need to. I believe in exercising. I believe in sunshine. Vitamin D. God has provided everything. Get out in nature. Get out and exercise. Go and be happy this emotional toll on the world that's the wisdom of the world the emotional toll on people's spirits and their emotions is real and it's going to take people down in itself hallelujah so stay strong spiritually stay strong physically stay strong emotionally Stay strong in your relationships, and disease cannot uh, come near your body. It shall not come near my dwelling, Psalm 91. Glory to God. And God says, I'm going to destroy that. Every single lie, every high thing, every argument, stronghold, proud obstacle, every high thing that is in contrast to the word of God, we declare no avoid and powerless. The weapons of our warfare are mighty in the pulling those things down, because the word of God always trumps anything the world, the wisdom and the wisdom of this world I will destroy it says the Lord I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate one birth out of pride one birth out of humility one birth on believing the cross of Jesus Christ one birth out of pride in exalting their intelligence and God says I'm going to frustrate it hallelujah so we just get to relax enjoy the ride Amen. Watch God do what he does best. He always has a plan. Amen. When we get the mind of Christ, we're not frustrated. We stay in peace. Therefore, that is a fruit of having the wisdom of God, the peace of God. So, carrying on. For Here's another difference. For since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom, did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. So what's another difference between the wisdom of God and the wisdom of this world? One will save. Amen. It's only the wisdom of God that God says, I'm gonna, I can save. That's the only way that we can be saved. So how wise is, I'm, I'm believing, Paul is speaking kind of sarcastically here. This wisdom of the world, it can't lead to salvation. It can't save a single soul. And those who are too proud to admit that they have a need in their life, they're not going to see it. 
And that's how smart they think they are. They think they're smarter than God. And they won't see the preaching of the word that we all need Jesus Christ. All sheep like have gone astray. Every one of us has turned to our own way. But Jesus has laid, God has laid that iniquity on Jesus. Amen. And when we're humble enough to receive him, if we believe and receive Jesus Christ, that power of God com comes alive on the inside of us. It is the power of God. And we are born again born of the spirit something happened that wasn't going to happen any other way but supernaturally and God said by he was pleased in the um in the passion it says he took great delight in preaching the story of the cross in order to save those who believe God took great delight in upsetting the apple cart of the wisdom of the world to saying, I'll tell you what wisdom is. Wisdom is, believe me, you're a lot smarter. You are very smart to finally get it. I look back and at the age of 24, I finally smartened up after sitting in church for my whole life. I finally got smart enough to realize God's word didn't change. God isn't going to change. I too needed to be born again. Just because I went to catechism classes and Christian school and memorized scripture and prayed at breakfast, lunch, and supper and got the word down in my throat and memorized scripture, that wasn't enough. I needed to bow my knee and say, I am. I'm a sinner. And the wisdom, God was so pleased to say, I'm going to see who's smart enough. So he took great pleasure. I want to give you a backup scripture to this. In Matthew, Jesus, ha ha ha. He just, he is, I just see Jesus uh, smiling up to the Lord. God has said to, Jesus was preaching and he said, if the miracles that you have seen were performed in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented a long time ago. But know the world. How many of you know this world is looking a lot like Sodom and Gomorrah? And they're ignoring the preaching of God's word. And you know what? Jesus took great delight at that moment. Instead of being, he could have felt a lot of things. But at that time, at that moment, Jesus said, I praise you. This is Matthew eleven twenty-five. 25. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Even as we sing, Lord of heaven and earth. Because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned. And he's revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased and took great delight in doing. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows them but the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and to, and to those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. God gives revelation knowledge to everyone. He saves. He not only saves us when we finally received Jesus Christ to as many received him, he gave us power to become sons and daughters of the Lord. Amen. And he gives us revelation knowledge. He has revealed them to little children. He took great delight in hiding this from the wisdom of the world, from the intelligence of the intelligent. He took great delight in hiding, saying you can't see it. And it won't be revealed to you unless you humble yourselves. Revelation knowledge is part of the package. See, we don't know when I, in my natural self, when I hear a certain, certain circumstances, these masks and all kinds of things, okay, I can get frustrated. I got frustrated. Until I said, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What are you doing? And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart at that very moment. I humbled myself, became like a child, and asked for the mind of Christ. He said, Joel 2.16, gather the assembly, gather the um, elders, gather the aged, gather the nursing uh, babies, gather everyone, and call a holy, holy solemn fast. Begin to pray, even as it says in, in Chronicles, if my people who humble themselves, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, turn from their self-centered ways, I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive your sins, and I'll heal your land. 
Healing's going to come when we get on our knees and say, God, read my lips. You said this. We are humbling ourselves. We are praying. We don't know anything. We need your revealed knowledge. We need the mind of Christ. We need to understand what you're doing by your spirit. We need to acknowledge you in all of our ways. Give me insight, Father God. What's going on around here? And he says, I'll reveal them by my spirit. I've revealed it to children, to those who just stop and ask. The disciples were like children. They said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Lord, show us how to do this. Amen. So God gives wisdom and revelation knowledge to those who just simply humble themselves, become like a child, and ask. Amen. We can ask about anything and everything. Do you ever notice children ask about everything? We, we've got little Olivia now, who's almost four. She asks about everything. Opa, how come you this? How come that? How come you put tape on the pool? How come this or that? She asks a, a zillion questions in a day. Uh, we can ask the father a zillion questions a day. Father, why are you doing that? What are you trying to teach me through this? How are you intending to draw the whole world? How are you going to frustrate the wisdom of the world and, and cause a revival to come? How, how is this very thing that we get frustrated with in the wisdom of the world? How, how, what are you doing underneath all this, Heavenly Father? I want to see what you're doing. Amen? He said, I'm going to frustrate that wisdom of the world. There's nothing God hates more. As a matter of fact, he says he opposes the pride. He opposes those who are proud. Amen. So we need to become like children. So another difference. He, he's pleased through the foolishness of what is preached to save those who believe. That's the only way we can be saved. Through the wisdom of God. And next is like uh, point number three. But to those whom God has called both Jews and Greeks, God's Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So by tapping into the wisdom of God, we get the wisdom of God. Amen. By acknowledging God, you are smarter than what's going on here. We not only get the wisdom of God, but we also get the power of God. The, his power becomes manifest in us. We got to sort of plug into the mind of Christ, and then as soon as revelation knowledge comes, the power comes. You're going to be powerless if you don't know uh, the workings of how this works, how to plug into the power of God, the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than any human wisdom. So if you really want to wise up, if you really want to be smart, amen, we need to get to the wisdom of God. Tap in to what that revelation knowledge. And brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. He doesn't want us to stay there. He said, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. Have you watched this play out? Maybe you had uh, a lot of people who were uh, got way higher marks in school than you do. That wasn't hard to do. There were lots of people who got way higher marks. But I, it, I didn't live that long before I realized all the people that got the high marks were not necessarily wiser or smarter. They were really dumb when it came to just doing life. Amen. And God's saying, hey, so there's, there's people up there who they got, the, uh, they got so many degrees, uh, they got so many diplomas hanging up on their walls, and not that God puts a premium on, on not being educated. It's good to add knowledge, right? We, we learned last week, we add knowledge. That's what, a good thing. He doesn't, doesn't put a premium on ignorance, uh, but it doesn't guarantee our success. Amen. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. So it takes humility. In 1 Samuel 17, 41, uh, going back to that story of David, uh, this it doesn't take, God uses the weak things to shame the strong. How many knew how big Goliath was? Amen. So here we see a small boy. Uh, not very many weapons in his hands. 
It's not by our might, and it's not by our power, and it's not by our smarts, and it's not by our size, and it's not by our strength that the battle's won. The battle is the Lord's, and it's going to be won in the strength of the Lord. Uh, I just want to move along quickly. Kids are being awesome here. First Samuel 17 and 41 says, Meanwhile, the Philistine, that's Goliath, with his shield there in front of him, kept coming closer to David. Here you got to picture this. He looked at David over, and he saw that he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And this Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David didn't let the enemy have the last word. He said to the Philistine, you're coming to me against me with that big sword and spear and your javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. And verse 47, all those gathered here now... Uh, know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. Not only are we going to take you out, we're going to take your whole army out. Amen? Because he knew that it wasn't because of his strength or his size. So you're thinking, how could a kid win a battle? How big was the little boy who decided to give up his lunch and said, well, I have a little lunch when Jesus fed his 5,000. Little lunch, a few fish, a few little buns in his lunch bag, and he gave and brought them to Jesus, and Jesus said, have everybody sat down. It wasn't in the amount of food. It wasn't in the size of the little boy. He just took a step of faith. Do you think he knew the whole time of what Jesus was going to do? I don't think so. Just like a lot of us, we don't know what God going to do. When our little Jesus said, if you're faithful and little, God is going to put you over much. And he'll use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise to say, how did that person ever become president of this company? Because they trusted in the Lord and said, uh, I, I, I don't know a whole lot, Lord, but here I am. Here I am, Lord, send me. Amen. And so we need to have that confidence in this day, in this hour, that it's not because of your smarts. It's not like, oh, well, what, what good can an old man do these days? Or what can a little boy do these days? Believe me, the armies of the world have shaken in their boots and they feared more the prayers of a few saints that were praying than they feared all the armies. Because it's not in the strength of armies. It's not in the strength of our our big machines that we manufacture. Uh, did anybody see those great big double-winged helicopters fly over Dorchester the, a few days ago? They were big army things. And, and I thought, no wonder John the Revelator looked up and, and thought, thought they were a whole bunch of locusts coming in. That's another message in itself. But it's not being won by that. The real battle is on our knees. If my people that humble themselves and pray, we're going to see this nation turn around. And we're going to get the wisdom and the insight to saying, God, this very tactics of the evil one to bring about one world government and the cashless society and all of this fear and the manufacturing of uh, different viruses that can destroy and control population growth and all of these things it's like Lord while the nations rage and plot in vain the Lord sits in the heavens and he laughs he always gets the last laugh. The devil thought he had it when he crucified the son of glory. The religious leaders, they thought they did. They outsmarted their own system and against their very own laws, they crucified the son of glory. But that wasn't the end of the story. <laughs> And so we need to have this faith on the inside of us. What God can do as Canadians bow their knee. Imagine all the 
uh, seniors and all these uh, retirement complexes, if they would take the word of God at face value and say, a little frail 90-year-old sitting in a wingback chair by the window, nobody can come and visit her, but if she knew what power she had available to her, made that power available to say, I stand in agreement with every Canadian, every person across North America, everyone in China, all the saints in Africa, there's billions of people praying all over the planet to say, the weapons of our warfare, they're mighty. It's not the sizing of our army. It's not going to be won by your smarts. It's not going to be won by the medical society. It's not going to be solved. This whole thing that has, has uh, affected the school system, it's not going to be won when they all get their heads together. It's when us as Christians acknowledge God in all of our ways and say, we have fallen short of your glory, God. We have not always loved you the way we should. We have not always shared the gospel as we should. And now things are getting dark, but we have faith, oh God, that things can be turned around, that this is not the end of the story. Amen. Can I get an amen? This is not the end of the story. God is going to cause those very things to backfire on the enemy. How do I know? Because we say, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? Where's the good in this? What is it? And God's going, I got a plan. My people have been crying out for, for a worldwide revival. Since I became born again, I have had a gift of faith for a revival. For worldwide revival. What's that supposed to look like? I was frustrated when I get when I used to go to church and I'm going, God, this is not all there is. This is not all there is, and I'm still crying out to God. People, I believe we can rally up enough troops that eventually, uh, when we get the mind of Christ, the wisdom of God and what God's doing, and get it, get in on his agenda and his plan and see what we are. We are not limited to being in this physical building. Every day when you pray, you are part of a powerful army that can thwart the power of, of the world and bring God's solution. Thank you, Jesus. Even through the school system, this is many of our parents have believed for Christian education for so many years, and their taxes were being used uh, for uh, funding the public schools, and then they'd have to pay for, the, for Christian education as well. Well, through all of this, what's going on with the school systems, there's advertisements on TV now for Abeka, for Christian education, Christian based, faith based. That's what I taught my kids at curriculum was a Becca program. It's the good news of the Gospels in every science lesson, every geography lesson, every math lesson. They're getting faith, 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 and it's all from a biblical perspective. So even then, God is, God is moving. God is moving by his spirit, but it takes humility. So point number six, and I better move along. What time is it here? Okay, so we'll move along quickly. He uses the weak things of the world to shame the strong and the lowly things of the world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify those things that are so that no one can boast. So there's another advantage of the wisdom of God opposed to the wisdom of the world. So God is nullifying things that are. He's bringing them to naught. He's bringing them down. He's bringing those powers down so that no one can boast. And then the wisdom of this world, the wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. So the wisdom of God, when we say, God, I need your wisdom, I need a spirit of Jesus had the spirit of wisdom, insight, understanding, knowledge, power, and the fear of the Lord. When we acknowledge God, we need the same spirit that was in Jesus, is in us. Amen. God says, not only are you going to get saved, not only does the wisdom of God have the power to save, but now it is a power for your righteousness. It's a power to live a holy, upright, godly life in this world. Amen. Did you know that? Not only you were, you were put within you not only the power to become sons and daughters of God, but now you have access not only to the wisdom of God, but to live a life that is holy. 
to live a life that is holy. So if you're feeling powerless, I can't seem to overcome, realize within you is the power to live a holy life. It is the powers in there, the righteousness, the holiness, and the redemption, the redemption of our souls. How many know your mind, your brain needs redeeming? It's been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Now we have the mind of Christ. The last verse we read, we have the mind of Christ. Amen? We need redemption from our bodies. Someday we will be redeemed from these bodies. That's another uh, sermon in itself, but glory to God, that's point number seven. And so it is with me, says Saul turn to Paul. He says, I didn't come to you. He was trained under Gamaliel. He had so much education. He was so educated. He thought he was so smart, but he was the dumbest dude in the world when he started persecuting the church of Jesus Christ. And then he really got the wisdom of God. And then he had available to him the power of God. Amen. To win that whole known world to the Lord. And he came in demonstration of the Spirit's power. When we tap into the wisdom of God, we have access to the power of God to demonstrate the power of God. And number nine, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature. We have wisdom. Where did you get your wisdom? They asked Jesus at the age of 12, where did he get this? Where did you get such knowledge that you are stumping the scholars and the religious trained? And they marveled because he had authority in the spirit. Amen? And so we have that, we have that, that wisdom from God among the mature. But it's a different kind of wisdom. It's a wisdom of mystery. It's called, no, we declare God's wisdom a mystery. So if you're, if there's a mystery, it's a mystery what's going on in the world today. But it is revealed to us by his spirit. How many of you get excited? Whenever you see stuff happening, at least I'd rather see something happen than nothing happening. Just months before any of this happened, I thought, oh God, what is going to wake the church up? What is going to draw souls to you? Nobody wants to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. You say anything to any Canadian in your neighborhood, in your community, uh, the odd exception, maybe a, someone who's immigrated and really poor and doesn't speak the language and you, you know, some down and outer. But other than that, most Canadians didn't want to hear the good news of the gospel. What's, what's going to give God? And something had to give something how to give and so God in his wisdom amen it's a mystery how he works he works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform are you expecting wonders people are going to need signs and wonders which reminds me of a dream I had over 20 years ago and in this dream there was some kind of a, a, a catastrophe something like that's going on here except times 10 there was hardly a home where somebody wasn't sick or and and it didn't have a human uh, solution that's what I dreamt one more one night and then in the spirit I came out in the porch and I realized there was just darkness it had touched every single community and I looked up to the Lord and I called out Lord and then a great big lightning bolt came in and I went, I saw the glory of the Lord in the heavens and I went, yay, Jesus is coming back. And then I thought, nope, that's not it. And this lightning bolt came and struck my, struck me right here, right in my spirit. And I had what the Lord called lightning power anointing to deal with the problem, the pandemic or whatever that was happening on the earth. And uh, the next day, I had gone to Doug and Grace's to pick up John G. Lake's book. We had ordered a book. And he has this prophecy about, in the end times, lightning power anointing. That the, the world's not going to have a solution for what's happening. Like, I just about jumped out of my skin. You could have heard me, Yahoo, all over, to realize that now I'm realizing God's bringing back that dream. And I'm thinking, this is it. For such a time as this, there are going to be nobodies that are really somebodies. 
that are really to the world dummies. They're not educated medical and they're not educated in this. And what do you know? It's like, I know the power of God. I know the mystery of what God's really doing. I know people need to come into reality once again, even as Jesus walked the earth, when he went about doing good, healing those who are oppressed of the enemy. People need deliverance in Canada. Amen. People need healing. And God will set the stage. He always does. He's good at setting the stage. Every revival that's happened at the turn of the century, every revival that has come, has come out of a natural disaster or plagues or whatever or fires of cities and revival would spring forth. And so I get kind of excited when everything gets shaken because something's got to give <laughs> to prepare people's hearts. I'd rather go through whatever if this, that's what it's going to take for souls to come to Jesus before they'll listen to anything about the power of the gospel. And at that moment, they're going to get a lot more than just getting saved and their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. They're not only going to get born again, they're going to have the wisdom of God, they're going to have power to live holy lives, and they're going to turn the world upside down. Amen? Hallelujah. God's going to nullify Everything else, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So the same as when Jesus died. If they would have known, if they would have known, none of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. If they had, they never would have done. We're going to be able to say by faith ahead of time, if they knew where this was going, they would have never tried to orchestrate this evil. They would have never done this to control us. They would have never done this. Shut down the schools because guess what? It's going to backfire. Because there is a wisdom that's above the wisdom of the world. Glory to God. Last point. No eye has seen, no ear heard, and it hasn't even entered the human mind that God, what... We haven't even conceived in our mind the things that God has prepared to those who love them. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit of God searches all things. The spirit of God. So this is, can be a part of your prayer. When you don't know, because there's lots of things we don't know. Amen. When we don't know, all we need to do is say, Holy Spirit, search the heart of the Father. Reveal the heart of the Father. Help us to pray the heart of the Father by your spirit. And we tune in to the greatest power, greater than any nuclear power, greater than anything the enemy can throw at us. We tap into that power. Amen. How many believe it this day, today? And you not only believe it, you receive it. You receive it. Hey, Amen. Maybe you don't feel very big and smart and strong. Hallelujah. What can I do in the in the face of the uh, of these challenges of my day? You can tune into the wisdom of God. You can get the insight and say, God, you know what? That's the wisdom of man, and it'll only go so far. It's not that they're ed they're not educated. They are. They're educated. There's people educated in their field, but God's got a wisdom above that. He wants to use you. Don't let anybody feel that despise you, despise your youth, despise God. Paul speaks to Timothy. He says, don't let anybody despise your youth. Or don't let anybody despise your age or your lack of education or whatever. It just believe, God, I'm not much in myself, but I believe I can tune in to the wisdom of God, the power of God. I can ask my daddy anything I want. And he's got the answer. And he's not trying to conceal this. He's trying to give us revelation. He's trying to give us that revelation knowledge. He has revealed this to children. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, that's that. There's a whole lot more in here. So many examples I could share, but time isn't permitting that. So let's stand to our feet. How many want to be a conduit to the wisdom? The wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I do. God likes that childlike faith. Thank you, Jesus. Just stand and put your hands up to receive from the Lord. How many believe if you put your hands up in faith to receive, you're going to receive something? 
Amen. When people came to Jesus, they came expecting to receive. He could look at them and he could see that they had faith to receive. They could see, he could see that they had faith to be healed. So Heavenly Father, we stand before your throne of grace as your children. And in ourselves, Father, maybe we weren't much when we were called, but glory to God, we know you and you have revealed things by your spirit and you can show us, Lord God, great and mighty things to come. Let us have dreams and visions of revival, Father. Let us have wisdom, Father, how to reach the masses, Lord God. We pray for those prophets and those preachers and those ones who have been uh, assigned to go to the leaders of this of our nations, Father. And in Jesus' mighty name, we stand as an army, Father. Some of us foot soldiers, some of us marching on our knees by prayer, Father. But we thank you. There is a great and mighty army. And by many or by few, we shall take the land. We just claim Canada. I boldly stand with any Christian that's that's standing for Canada. We will stand on guard for you. Lord, we will stand in Canada. We will thank you, Lord, that your blood was shed and dripped down the cross and into the ground, Lord Jesus, to redeem the world. You are the Savior of the world. And we give you praise and glory. We thank you for revival that's coming. We thank you that our neighbors are being prepared, Father. Their hearts are being softened, Lord. That proud obstacles and arguments and strongholds are coming crashing down around the face and the ears of our politicians, Father. They're going to have no choice but look up to heaven and look up to you. And we give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's saints said, Amen. 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 Amen.